So good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Chris Bent, uh, president of Atlantic Cruising Yachts. Welcome to Cocktails and Conversations. Uh, we've been doing uh, quite a few of these over the last uh, six months or so, and I think it's been a lot of fun. Uh, today, uh, I've got a good friend of mine from St. Pete, Captain Dave Amon of Sailing Florida, that's going to join us for uh, for a while and talk about uh, the uh, the charter season and uh, everything that's happening in, in St. Pete, Florida. Welcome, Dave. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. And I also have Susan Restori, who is the manager at Waypoints and specializes in booking uh, charter vacations and uh, crewed yacht charters at all of the various Waypoints uh, locations around the world. So uh, very happy to have Susan. Welcome. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> So uh, before we get it, get into everything, I'm going to just take a few minutes to talk a little bit more about who we have. So Dave, as I said, is the the founded uh, Sailing Florida almost 20 years ago, and prior to that, he uh, he was stuck behind a desk doing accounting with Price Waterhouse. So I think he's a lot happier to be uh, playing with boats uh, these last uh, uh, 20 years or so. Um, we started working with Dave. Uh, at Atlanta Cruising Yachts, partnering to put boats into the Sailing Florida fleet. I guess it's been five, six years ago at least, and it's been a great partnership. Um, we've got a lot of happy boat owners that have uh, benefited from Dave and his great team um, and the beautiful location there in, in St. Pete. Um, Susan, uh, as I mentioned, she manages the waypoints. Uh, uh, Charter bookings and charter reservations and crew charters. Uh, waypoints, uh, you'll see her at our waypoints uh, uh, kiosks at, at all the boat shows when we start having them again. And uh, hopefully the next one will be actually in St. Pete. We're waiting today to find out if that's going to be on, but we're, we're fingers are crossed. But uh, Susan's been in the, in the charter industry also a long time, uh, 19 years. And prior to joining us at Waypoints uh, a number of years ago, she was a, a charter specialist at Voyage Charters. So she knows the Virgin Islands extremely well, very well connected there, and also uh, working in the crude yacht charter industry for a long time. Um, so uh, she's an active member of the Charter Yacht Brokers Association, very active in the industry. So we're, we're lucky to have Susan. So uh, that's a little bit about her. Um, I'll uh, take this opportunity to talk about Atlantic Cruising Yachts a little bit, my company. Um, so we are a large uh, yacht dealership based in Annapolis, Maryland, but with uh, offices in Fort Lauderdale and St. Pete and also now in Texas. Uh, in Florida and Annapolis, uh, East Coast, we represent Fontaine Peugeot Catamarans. Have For a long time, we are the largest dealer in the world for Fontaine Peugeot. Um, we deliver, I think this year we'll deliver close to 40 new yachts for Fontaine Peugeot in the uh, in this market and in the Caribbean. We're very proud of that and we've worked very hard uh, on that uh, on that relationship and enjoy a great partnership with, with Fontaine Peugeot. Uh, we also became a dealer this year, we're very excited, uh, for Dufour Yachts, uh, a great uh, high-end uh, uh, production monohull sailboat. Uh, focused on performance and comfort, uh, and prior to that, we were Chanel dealers for a long time. Uh, so we've gotten off to a great start with Dufour. We've got a 4:30 contracted to go down to St. Pete and charter at Sailing Florida, uh, which is an exciting start. It's a great boat to sail, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Atlantic Cruising Yachts also uh, have been involved with business yacht ownership. Uh, and, and the Waypoints Network, creating uh, charter opportunities for boat owners that want to purchase a boat as a business asset, and enjoy income and tax advantages and so forth. And we, uh, we work with a number of independent uh, tax advisors and, and one of them, Bill Lair, uh, holds a seminar just about every week on business yacht ownership and, and how uh, boat owners can benefit from that with income and tax advantages and special financing. So uh, we'll we'll talk more on that at the end of this program and where you can find information if you're 
interested in buying a boat and, and, and putting in that kind of program, either with Dave and his crew in St. Pete or elsewhere. So that's Atlanta Cruising Yachts. Uh, Waypoints, uh, what is Waypoints? Well, Waypoints is a, is a network of independent uh, charter management companies like Sailing Florida, like Dave Amon's uh, company there in, in St. Pete, uh, uh, that we work with uh, uh, to provide boats into their program that have been sold to our customers. Um, we support the, the Waypoints uh, members with marketing, joint marketing, uh, we support them with warranty support for the boat owners, um, and it's a uh, it's an umbrella that uh, provides some consistency for folks that are looking to buy a boat and place it into management programs. They can move from one Waypoints member to another, um, and all of the management contracts are reviewed by independent uh, uh, tax uh, strategists to make sure that they're uh, that they're meeting the requirements of business. Uh, business use of the boat. And so Bill Lair goes and checks uh, on each of these locations and reviews the, the management contracts and and, uh, and so forth to, uh, to support that. So that's the Waypoints umbrella. Uh, and um, it's worked out very well. We've been, been working with Waypoints now for several years. And again, you'll see us at boat shows together, uh, sharing the costs of boat shows, uh, sharing the costs of marketing uh, to bring really more value for the charter and for the boat owner uh, in those in those ways. Uh, again, just a quick summary of business yacht ownership. What is it? Uh, basically, it's a it's a basket of tools uh, to allow a boat purchaser to buy a boat as a business and to generate income uh, and to have uh, expenses that are tax deductible business expenses. Um, it's a way to reduce the cost of ownership without having to lease your boat to a big uh, big charter company like uh, some of the ones that are down in the Caribbean and, and places like that that are offering lease payments and guarantee payments. This puts the boat owner much more in control of, of where the boat's located, how often it's used for business, uh, how it's maintained, uh, how it's equipped. It's really uh, oriented toward the boat owner um, and, and putting them you know, at the wheel, uh, uh, so to speak. So maximum flexibility, built-in incentives for quality maintenance instead of built-in disincentives that exist in these, in these leaseback arrangements. And again, it's a program uh, that's been widely supported by independent tax professionals and uh, tax strategists. Uh, so we'll we'll again talk more about the business yacht ownership webinar opportunity for those that want to learn more about it. So now um, would like to talk about St. Pete, and this is a picture that I love. It's the beautiful Vinoy Marina at Vinoy Renaissance Hotel. I'll be checking in Friday uh, with my family and staying there uh, uh, for a few nights, um, visiting David and uh, and. David Whitten, who uh, runs our office in St. Pete, but absolute stunning location. So, Dave, how did you how did you end up working with the Vinoy and and working in in this great location in St. Pete? Tell us a little bit about it. Well, basically, I had uh, been a CFO for a company for 18 years and had an equity position and ended up selling the company. We had a three-year earnout, and I bought a boat and put it at the Vinoy. I have a uh, very active Vinoy Club membership. Next thing I knew, I own two boats and three boats and four boats. So uh, it's just been a fantastic location for all of us. Currently, we have over 30 slips, so we have over 70% of the marina. And what happens is when any of our clients do come to charter with us, they have full use of all the Vinoy facilities. So they can use all the pools, the workout rooms, Room service delivers right to the boats. They get 10% off at all the restaurants. So it's just been a fantastic uh, dual partnership. They also have an 80,000 square foot convention center. So we provided all the participants uh, opportunity to do a half day sailing. And we did a ton of team building. They also had an opportunity. They have a very fantastic golf course, tennis facility. 
So when the participants come in for these conventions, we are right there, ready to help them and serve their needs. So you get a lot of charters out of, out of those activities, it sounds like. Yes, and on the pillow that everyone sleeps on at night, there's a little sheet that they put on before they uh, relax. And on that sheet, they have all the restaurant specials. If they'd like to book a half day or sunset cruise, they call the concierge by two and we have them on a boat by four. Wow. And um, this build, this building, the Vinoy, is beautiful. It's got quite a history. What's, uh, how long has it been there? The Vinoy's been there since the early 1900s. Yeah. And it went through a period where it shut down during World War II and it became a hospital. Then it went into major disrepair in uh, the late 80s. Uh, Fred Guess came in and invested over $90 million to renovate the entire facility. Prior to that, it had big fences all around it. Bums were living in there. The grand ballroom, they were playing basketball. It was just a total renovation just waiting to happen. And it's basically been the renaissance for all of St. Petersburg. It's now one of the major hot spots with just great restaurants. Everything's within walking distance. And we are the only charter business that's allowed in the marina. So we conduct all different aspects, including power yachts, sailing yachts. We do all the fishing charters. So it's just a great little relationship we have. Yeah, fantastic. And so I assume that when people come and charter uh, and when boat owners come down to St. Pete, they love being at the Vinoy, they prop, but they probably want to do some other things. After all, they are on a boat. So, what else is there to do on the cruising coast of Florida? Our insurance policy allows all our charter guests to explore the entire west coast of Florida. So, as they cruise, they can go to Longboat Key, Sarasota, Venice, Sanibel, Captiva. They can hit Key West to Dry Tortugas. So it's just a perfect cruising ground. And what's nice about it is you have the opportunity to hit some very nice high-end marinas. So you can anchor out one night, grab a mooring ball one night, also hit the, hit the marinas with great restaurants, swimming pools, and you have many, many options. So a typical charter, um, Dave, down in, out of St. Pete, if you have one would be a couple of days or a week or mostly day charters. What, what are you seeing? We have a combination. We're not your typical charter company where everyone flies in on a Friday, has a briefing Saturday morning and goes for a week. Um, we have a nice extension. We have a lot of local people. Um, we're very close to Disney in Orlando. So we do get a lot of overflow from the Disney crowd. You know, the kids want to spend a few days, as we call it, on the pavement, looking at Mickey. Then the wife wants to spend a couple days out at the beach. And then the dad says, hey, what about me? Can I go sailing for a couple days? So we do have some great itineraries. We have them all listed on our website, going from one day up to 10 days. This year, we've done a lot of extended trips due to the COVID. So it's just been an opportunity for a lot of uh, captain trips going down to the Dry Tortugas, which if you haven't been there yet, it's one of those must places you must put onto your uh, bucket list. Yeah, I've been there, it's spectacular, really great. And so uh, what's, so on on a, uh, like the MY44 Powercat, uh, what is, how long does it take to get to the Dry Tortugas from St. Pete? We can usually make a trip like that on the MY44 in about uh, two days. What we try to do is we bebop down the coast along the Gulf of Mexico and um, we'll make one stop, whether it's Sanibel Captiva or into Naples. And then from there, it's just a quick jaunt right across. So you'll come down here to, to uh, Sanibel and and then hop hop straight across to Key West and then over to the dry tour to do something like that. Correct. Yeah, cool. We see all these stuff. Of... Have, the nice thing about these is they just have fantastic marinas 
that people can uh, go in for the evening and just enjoy the whole environment that each one has. Now, do the, do the charters need to make their own marina reservations, or is this something they can have you set up in advance, or let the captain worry about it if they do a crew charter? What's you know, what's it like? Everything, is it everything depends on the time of year? Yeah. Um, during the busy holiday seasons, it's best to make your reservations ahead of time. That way, yeah. you're guaranteed, um, you know, a nice slip. Sure. And uh, you mentioned captain charters. The um, you're seeing a lot more of that these days. Correct. With the COVID, a lot of people have had extensive plans to uh, do whether it would be air travel uh, abroad, which has been delayed. So we really did have a very active season this year. And a lot of these individuals, whether they were couples or families, they decided to opt out for base, the base uh, social distancing that you could ever experience on a boat. Yeah, we, we saw the same thing here in Annapolis. We had a great season in Annapolis with people that uh, would maybe otherwise have gone to the Caribbean or or elsewhere, stayed at home and got in the car, drove down, chartered a boat, and you know took off for five, six, seven days. And and uh, so I think we had the best year ever in Annapolis, Susan. Is isn't that? It, yeah, absolutely. It yeah. was the best season we've ever had. Yeah, for charters in Annapolis. So and I, I think. I think you've had a pretty good season down there as well. So if I'm thinking about buying a boat and putting it into a, a charter business like this to offset the costs, um, how does it work at at uh, at sailing Florida? what you know what is the what's the revenue split and and you know what do I get you know for that? and um, you know what 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 do you, maintenance do you guys take care of? Can you just give us a little flavor on that and, and your team and and so forth? Sure. Currently, we probably have about uh, 18 different captains that we use. We're a very active ASA, which is the American Sailing Association Sailing School. We do anywhere from 12 to 15 uh, classes per month. We've been uh, members with the ASA almost 25 years now. So we are one of their lead schools in the country. Also, they have the opportunity to do captain charters or bare boat charters. It's like I said, it's a 50-50 split. We make sure that your boat is maintained. All records are maintained for you so you can re, uh, review those. Uh, on the docks themselves, we have a staff of nine to ten individuals, including mechanics. We maintain all the engines with all the uh, correct servicing and uh, time time frames for hours per engine. And then we take care of everything. You have unlimited usage on your yacht, plus you have the ability to uh, enjoy all the facilities at the Benoit when you're there at our marina. Also, one of the big benefits that we have is we are only uh, 15 to 20 minutes from the Tampa International Airport. And also, we are the same distance from the St. Pete Clearwater Airport. Huh. St. Pete Clearwater Airport currently runs Allegiant Air, and I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but it's one of the discount airlines, which has been very active right now. And a lot of their trips are planned from the uh, Friday through Monday, so people can come and enjoy a four-day weekend with us. Also, the Vinoy has black Lincoln Town Cars, so we use those, and they will pick everyone up at the, uh, the two different airports. It's basically $60 for four people and cheaper than taking an Uber. So we really try to make it so that you don't even need to worry about a rental car. We have just a fantastic uh, area with all little cafes along Beach Avenue. So you can just drive, or I'm sorry, you can just walk right along, and there's no real need for a, a rental car. Yeah, it's it sure is easy to get in there. I've, I've flown in and out of Tampa a lot, and uh, there's direct flights from a lot of direct flights from where I am in Baltimore, and I assume other places as well. And but boy, the the St. Pete area has just grown tremendously in the last ten years since I've been 
coming down there and working with you. It's uh, it seems like every week they're putting up a new, you know, high rise condo building and shops and restaurants. And it's been, uh, been really fun to watch. Um, and as of July, they just finished the new uh, St. Pete Pier, which yep. is basically a 26 acre family park. They have a water park, a million dollar playground for the kids, various restaurants. Um, and it's just within less than um, basically about 300 yards from our marina. And it's just another great area to uh, explore. So the last time I was there, they had just started tearing down the old uh, pyramid. So at the end of the pier. So it's going to be really great to see the new pier complex. So 50-50 revenue split, that's consistent with the whole East Coast and the Bahamas as far as the, you know, the revenue sharing arrangement for uh, a boat owner and a management company. And typically out of that, the owner, uh, the management company pays for all the, the marketing and advertising and, and charter agent fees for booking of the boat. They take care of the charter check-ins and check-outs and, and, uh, and, and part of the turnaround. and then uh out of the owners 50 percent they're paying the dockage and the maintenance and of course if, if they borrowed money the, the debt service on it and um so uh, that's a very typical uh revenue sharing arrangement in the in the caribbean it's done a little differently uh, it's a you know, typically a 70 30 split where the owner gets 70 percent of the revenue but then the owners charge the large turnaround fee for each charter that goes out and um, the, the management company gets their, you know, the bulk of their revenue in the form of turnaround fees. They can do it that way because they have a year round season, whereas uh, these, these Florida and East Coast destinations have a, have a shorter season. So they have to take a bigger uh, portion of the, of the charter uh, revenue, but they don't charge the turnaround fees. So at the end of the day, uh, what I've seen is it's basically about the same. Um, so very a very typical setup there. The feedback that we get from owners that go into sailing Florida is phenomenal. They're extremely happy with the maintenance of their boats, with the the revenue that they get, and and the care and and service that they get from Dave and his team. It really they tell me it feels like family. Um, you know they they get to know Dave and and and, and the staff there, and they. They um, they have a great experience, and of course they all love being at the Vinoy and getting pampered uh, at the Vinoy by by being a boat owner there. So um, a lot of a lot of benefits to to having a boat there in St. Pete with Sailing Florida. Um, we talked about some of these questions, but not all of them. So um, I think you how many boats did you say that you manage right now? Uh, currently we have a uh, 38. 38, yeah. And you're uh, you're seeing uh, demand increase, uh, and and also looking to replace some older boats. Do you have a, a wish list of boats that uh, that you'd like to see coming in to replace some of the older ones that you have? Yes, we're definitely uh, looking for some of the new DeFours. Yeah. Um, you know the 40 plus, and also the catamarans have been very very successful for us. We do a lot of. Um, classes we also teach the asa 114 cruising catamaran so we do get a lot of individuals that eventually want to charter down in the caribbean but they want to get all the classes behind them so this is a perfect opportunity for them to spend a little bit less on airfare and come down and really have a great educational process of learning on our catamarans you also i know you're the name of the company is sailing florida but i know that you're doing more and more uh power boat uh, charters, especially with this increase in interest in domestic uh, crew charters. And um, I, you know, I've got a couple clients that have bought uh, Fontaine Peugeot uh, uh, power cats from me and put them in your fleet there and uh, have been very happy with the, the, the response. What's going on there with power cats and, and, and uh, St. Pete? Well, what's happened is St. Pete basically has become very similar to a Fort Lauderdale or Miami. The uh, business crowd and individuals are also looking for the larger power boats now. So it's been a whole new market for us. Um, 
including both bare boat, where guys can go ahead and take an MY-37 and run down the coast on their own, or if they want a fully crew charter, we have several groups that will crew for them, including a first mate, or if they'd like to put a chef aboard. We also have various catering options for individuals if they just want to do a day trip. So the power business has really started to increase and we are definitely in the uh, need of getting some additional power yachts in our fleet. Great. Well, we happen to have a few available this uh, coming this year, so we'll talk more about that. Um, I think we, we touched on some of these other ones. The, um, the maintenance approach is, is uh, you've got regular maintenance programs that uh, I'm sure anybody that's interested in putting a boat into your fleet, they can call you up and talk to you directly, come visit you, meet the team, and, and learn more about that. Um, your charter bookings, I know you get, uh, we talked about, you get a bunch from the Vinoy, but um, also, you know, we see your marketing out there. What, what, uh, what other sources of charter bookings do you have? Uh, we're very active on all the social media fronts today. We also um, have been selected as one of the moorings bases. So we are getting a lot of uh, moorings bookings. On the mooring side, they're doing all the four to seven day charters. Yep. So it's been a select group there and um, it's it's worked out very well for us. Yeah, that's been a win-win for everybody because they are very good at booking charters um, and, and their marketing. Whereas, you know, you're great at maintaining and managing boats and, and the program I think that we have with business yacht ownership is much more beneficial for the owners. So I think that uh, that's been a nice uh, a nice uh, uh, involvement there that's uh, that's happened. And, and um, I client that booked they booked a 10 day charter went to the Dry Tortugas and they've been a loyal moorings charter client for the past 20 years and have hit all the different bases. They came back and they said, within the next six months, we're coming back. We had so much fun. Yep. And it was in the summertime. So, you know, everything's about attitude and the way that people want to do things. But it's quite obvious that the West Coast of Florida really does have some great little destinations to hit. For sure. And and how do you see the boat the boats holding up down there? Um, I know we sold a, a quite a few of the cats and 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 the monohulls uh that have come up out of the program and owners are ready to move up to another boat or or get a different boat and uh, we've had great resale value um any uh, comment you have there on uh you know we the have several owners if they do they start out you know in the mid 30s and then they also say hey we're ready to move up into the 40s and then the 50s so we have several of our owners that are now on their third boat with us yeah. Yeah. That's always a great sign. You know, when we have repeat clients coming back to ACY uh, from a charter base a partner that we work with, we know that uh, that things are working well. And we see that a lot uh, with Sailing Florida. So we touched on COVID and, and the impact there. Maybe we can just talk a little bit more. I know it's on everybody's minds. We'd like not to talk about it so much, but I think it's important. Um, the Florida chartering market, it sounds like COVID's probably been okay for your market down there in the sense that you have people coming to get away on a you know, five day or seven day boat trip that otherwise might have gotten on a plane and gone to Europe or the Caribbean or somewhere else. So i um, curious to know if that's in fact what you're seeing and what your bookings look like for the next 12 months and maybe talk a little bit about the protocols that you put in place for safety um, and you know what if any impact it's had on the on the charter fleets i know that in the caribbean uh, we've had a number of owners um, when it opened up they went down there and grabbed their boats and wanted to take off and be you know homeschooling and working from home on their boat rather than in a you know in a house or a you know apartment building in new york city and so the fleets there are down a bit. Um, I know I just threw a lot at you, but it's all here on this slide. Maybe you can address some of this for us. Well, if you had to take a class in school 
social distancing 101, <laughs> you can't ask for a better thing than being on a yacht. And our staff, right. wear, they wear gloves, they wear masks. We have a special tool that they go in and spray the boats down. So we're doing everything in our power to uh, make it a smooth transition, both for the client and for for us. And their Thanksgiving, totally booked. Christmas is already totally booked. Um, the major holidays, this is just a great way for people to get together with either friends or family. So it's really, I know a lot of people can't travel outside of the US, but for us right now, between limited airfare and driving, we've been very successful in uh, keeping these boats very busy. We've had a very, very active summer. Well, that's great to hear. And uh, how are your bookings looking for the next 12 months? Would you say you're up at, uh, about average, down a little bit? What do you, what's uh, your we're, we're, def we're definitely up. Yep. And as I said, you know, a lot of them are the longer term charters because people, it's a pent up demand. They have the cash, they've been sitting at home and they just want to get out. And this is just a fantastic way to en enjoy the whole uh, Florida coast. Yep. And I know you've got a lot of boats that we put in there five, six years ago, um, and probably uh, time to, to see some new boats down there. We touched on that a little bit, but uh, we'll talk more when we review some of the boats that are available to, to buy and put in there. But uh, so I think I heard you say uh, some monohauls to update the monohaul fleet with, with some new Dufours, some power cats for sure to meet yes. that growing demand and, and, a, and a few sailing cats to uh, replace either some of the older ones or some that have left to go cruising with the owners. Yeah, well, that is what happens with a lot of us. A lot of our boat owners is they have a suggested plan where, you know, they plan on keeping the boat in the fleet two to three years and then retiring and going off cruising. So we do have several of those vessels that are uh, getting ready to uh, experience that next phase of life. Yeah. Yeah, and you know it's interesting. We you know we we have manufacturers that are really building at full capacity right now. Um, some of them cut back a little bit with the staff with the COVID shutdown, but uh, the demand hasn't really gone away. So the lead times continue to go out. Um, Atlantic Cruising Yachts, we manage that uh, because of our long relationship with FP as their top dealer. They allow me to hold and reserve a lot of production uh, from the factory, about 25 boats that production slots that we keep on order at all times. We have a large, very large chunk of our money sitting in their, uh, their deposit account, which is fine. And we just roll it over every time we sell a boat because we know that we need those slots. Um, so as a result, we, we, we have the best availabilities. Uh, we've got, I think last count, 16 Fontaine Peugeot's production slots that we can deliver in 2021, which is which is great because for most models, if you were to put an order in today, you'd be looking at 2022. So we have we have some boats. Now there are some models that are out there, but a lot of them that are available in 2021. We've got MY44s and 40s. We've got some of the brand new Isla 40. We did a cocktails and conversations uh, episode with my friends from La Rochelle and talked about that boat a few weeks ago. Uh, anybody that's interested in these older episodes, they are recorded and available. You can email one of our sales team and they can get you the link so you can learn about that boat. Um, and, and then of course, we've got uh, a number of Dufours that are coming in uh, for inventory that are available. Uh, and we just did our first contract for a 430 Dufour to go into sailing Florida to Dave's fleet. Uh, so very excited about that. Because um, we know when people get on that boat and go sailing uh, down there in, in the west coast of Florida, they're gonna want one. So Dave, that was awesome. Um, appreciate the, the uh, background on what you're doing there. You guys are doing a great job. Um, love the partnership and we, we love working with you. Um, at the end of this presentation, um, I'm going to take questions. Uh, we just we have a lot of people that are on listening, and, and rather than 
you know, take them uh, throughout the course of the presentation. I, I, you know, I collect the questions at the end and I'll read them off. It makes it easier to do it. So there will be an opportunity to ask Dave questions. Um, I want to shift gears now and just ask Susan uh, to just give us an update on some of the other Waypoints destinations. I know a lot of people you know, are hearing different things about what's happening in the BVI, the British Virgin Islands, you know, with their COVID lockdown. They just uh, reopened the borders yesterday. They have some protocols, uh, and I think the charter companies, our Waypoints partners in particular, have been very creative and, and accommodating to, uh, to make it work. So you can tell us a little bit more about that and tell us what's happening in the Bahamas and our season here in Annapolis, uh, our friends in Belize and our friends in the U.S. Virgin Islands and finally um, up in Newport, uh, which I think also had a very good season this year. So Susan, tell us uh, what's happening in the Bahamas. We have you know, got a great partnership there in, in the Abacos. Um, what's going on there? Well, lots going on there. Um, they just opened back in November and they seem to be, you know, starting off slow. I mean, people are still a little bit um, uneasy about traveling, but the, the traveling starting to pick up again. Uh, for COVID, just hitting that one right off the top is, is they have the PCR test. You have to have a negative test five days before you go down. But it seems like after that, as long as it's negative and you go in, um, you can go in with no problems and you can visit anywhere you want. You can go on charter and enjoy yourselves. Yeah. I know we've got a lot of beautiful new boats headed that way. Um, so uh, we've got some sailing monohulls. We've got, of course, some sailing cats and uh, a couple MY37s and I think a new MY44 headed there soon. Um, you know the Bahamas just rebuilt. They had Hurricane Dorian, you know, the year before last, then COVID last year. So it's been uh, a wild couple of years, uh, to say the least, in the Bahamas. But the um, Abaco Beach Resort in in Abaco, Marsh Harbor, has been completely rebuilt. It's beautiful. Um, everything's up and running there. And then, you know, the cruising. It's funny when you go to the Bahamas. Um, and you go to Marsh Harbor, everybody there tells you, well, you're still in Florida. And you say, what? And they say, the real Bahamas is out there. You have to go out to, you know, to uh, Elbow Key and, and Tulucut and, and, you know, Gu and, and Guana and Nippers and, and uh, Pete's Pub. And that's where, that's where the real Bahamas are. And it's amazing. You, you leave Marsh Harbor and, you instantly, you, you do, you feel like you've left the United States because, you know, Marsh Harbor had the convenience stores and the grocery stores and all that. It's, you know, all being rebuilt now, but, um, but those out islands are beautiful. They've been rebuilt. You know, that's where a lot of the expat money is, the restaurants, the, the marinas. Um, so it's there and waiting to be enjoyed that, you know, the beaches are pristine, they're beautiful. The water is gorgeous. Um, it's, it's probably a great opportunity to go down and enjoy it before it gets, gets crazy again. Um, not that it was ever too crazy, but, but, um, you know, it's still the Bahamas, but, um, I think it's a, it's a good time to be there. Um, and so, um, the other interesting thing about the Bahamas, tell us about the captain by day concept down there. Yeah, it's a really neat idea. Uh, so what happens is, is if you need a captain, most of the, the boats um, have three cabins, or if you have a larger group wanting to go, and you always have that trouble with, well, where does the captain sleep? Well, this they've solved that problem. It's wonderful. So captain gets on the boat, and the morning takes you to destination, uh, the first destination of the day. They put you on a mooring ball, and they hop in a little tiny boat and go home for the evening, and then yeah. they turn Morning. It's one of the, the unique setups of, of the Abacos is, you know, everything is, you know, basically 15 minutes by center console. So you can go out and have a great sail with a, with a skipper. He can get you onto the mooring ball, get you secured for the night. And then, uh, you know, they come out and pick him up in the center console, take him back and then bring him back in the morning. So you've got your privacy for the evening. Um, but you get up when you're ready to go, you've got your captain to take care of the boat and everything. And that's been really successful for, uh, for, for our partners there in the Bahamas and added a lot of charters um, uh, to people who may, you know, 
may not be qualified to do a bare boat, don't really want a captain on board on a 40 foot, you know, three cabin uh, catamaran, this is a great solution. So that's the Bahamas. Annapolis, we had a great year. T tell us what's going on in Annapolis. Well, yeah, we had a, a stellar year this year. Uh, the COVID, like Dave had the same situation in Florida. In Annapolis, people weren't traveling and they were canceling their trips at various places in the med. Uh, and they were taking their family into Annapolis to charter six, seven, eight, 10, 14 day charters, which were really nice. And the Chesapeake Bay is just such a beautiful place to charter that it was easy for them to spend 14 days or 10 days or even seven nights out um, on the water. We found uh, that, you know, we did start a little late, of course, uh, but the season was just packed in. One of the things that we did right this year was was our safety protocols that we put in place. We jumped right on that. Uh, we followed all this, the CDC guidelines and, and made sure these boats were cleaned and added longer times in between charters. So not only did we have extra time to clean the boats, but we had extra time to do just general maintenance and things that needed to be done on the boats to make sure that they stayed in, the, in impeccable condition through the season. Yep, so this is our charter base in Annapolis and our headquarters for ACY. I'm sitting right here right now in this little yellow building and Susan's over here in the charter office and these are all our docks here, all the, the FP catamarans and B4 boats that you see here. For those of you that are familiar with Annapolis, this is where the boat show happens at Ego Alley and we are directly across the creek. You just walk across the little drawbridge, you take the water taxi and you end up here. So it's a great spot. We've got Restaurant Row right here with uh, Luna Steakhouse and Ruth's Chris and Carol's Creek. So all the good restaurants are here. We're pretty spoiled. Not as spoiled as Dave in St. Pete, but but it's not bad. Talk to us about Belize. We've got a, a great partnership there with uh, Belize Sailing Vacations. Um, I think it's pretty much crude charter. Uh, Belize it can be a little tricky. Uh, with navigation, so it's all pretty much crude, as you know, from what I understand. But incredible diving, and and uh, the waters there are really renowned for that. So, how are they doing? They're doing great. Uh, business is picking up. Uh, they've been open for a little while, and uh, they're they're offering a nice little special because they do the the all inclusive charters. It's uh, bring two guests for free. So um, if you have six guests on board, you're only paying for four, which is a really nice option. But the 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 beauty about Belize, and and I I love these pictures that you've used because I've seen them. Uh, they're just you you sail and it's open and you don't see anything, and all of a sudden you just come up to this beautiful oasis. Um, uh, and you see the colors and the beaches and uh, there's lobster diving and and conch diving and just it's rich in history and beauty. The other nice thing about Belize, well, let me just go back to this real quick, Chris. With Belize, not only can you go sailing, you can add a land tour onto it because you've got the Mayan ruins and the jungles and things like that. So for those people that don't want to spend an entire week on a boat, well, they can go on land too. So yeah. that's a nice option. Very nice. Yeah, I haven't been there personally yet. I know you were there, what, two years ago? Yeah. Yeah, and you've been raving about it ever since. So <laughs> I'll get, it's, on, it's on my list. Good. Then, of course, the BVI, uh, everybody, most people that are in, into sailing and cruising are familiar with the BVI and probably have chartered there. Um, they just opened yesterday, right? So yeah. what's what's the story with going, going chartering and going cruising in the BVI now? Well, the BVIs have implemented a pretty strict protocol right now. Uh, but I'm already seeing that they're they're lessening the protocols and, and they will. Uh, but the beauty of it is, is unfortunately they were closed for a number of months, but it allowed the islands and the underneath the water to grow back and to get healthy again for this new group of people coming back in. So um, they they opened up yesterday. Uh, you've got a four day quarantine on board, but the government is going to allow you to go sailing 
during the daytime, stop, anchor. You have a bubble basically around your boat. You can snorkel, you can dive, you can do those things. You're just gonna stay away from other people. Um, and after the fourth day, you get another test and then you're free to go. So for instance, one of our, our partners down there to, to offset that are offering 11 days for the price of seven. So there's your extra four days that, um, that you've lost or you really didn't lose it, but conceptually people think it that way is yeah. if your plan is to go hang out at uh at the soggy dollar all day long then yeah you've lost four days but if you want to go put the anchor down or or grab a mooring ball and grill out cook your lobster hang out have a, have a drink swim enjoy the beauty of the islands you know you can call it quarantine if you want to it sounds pretty good to me I like it. <laughs> Well, it'll be fun to watch and see how that goes. And um, um, I know that uh, that Kirsty and and um, uh, and Alexia there and Tortola were very excited for today. They had a number of charters, you know, starting, yeah. um, and uh, people are going. So that's good. Newport, New England, got a great partnership up there with Brian Blank at um, at uh, Bareboat Sailing Vacations. Um, What's happening in Newport this summer and next yeah. summer? Well, this past summer was fantastic too. Um, this, uh, their season was right on on target um, and it, they stayed completely busy. Uh, they expect next season is gonna be just the same. Uh, that's one thing about them. They've got such a short season that they pack the, they pack the charters in from a Saturday to Saturday. So yeah. um, Brian's done a great job at marketing and, and getting people in there and, and booking their boats. Uh, so the other thing is, is we also have um, access to a couple of catamarans up there, um, mm -hmm. becoming something nice as well. So we've got the uh, Lucia 40 and an Estrella 42 up there, which we charters. Yeah, in the month of August, when it's 100 degrees uh, on the Chesapeake Bay and 95% humidity, that uh, is about the best place in the world that I could think of to go cruising and go and go boating is is Newport. It's yeah. uh, you know, cooler, less humidity, cool evenings. It's a, it's a it's a gorgeous place, and I've had a lot of fun cruising up there. But you're right; it's a short season, so you gotta you gotta book early. And um, you know, keeping a, a boat up there is interesting because you can keep a boat up there and get a lot of charter activity. Because as Susan said, he he tends to book them like they do in the islands, back to back. You know, with a day for service and cleaning in between. So you can get uh, eight to 10 weeks of charter in a very compact period of time. And then you could take the boat down to the Bahamas for the winter or Florida for the winter. And we've had a, a lot of owners do that and, uh, and really enjoy it. So um, something to think about. The US Virgin Islands, I think has benefited a lot from the BVI shutdown, um, although that's been, uh, uh, not as much maybe as if as if people could go in and cruise in the BVI, but um, people are discovering that the U.S. Virgin Islands has a heck of a lot to offer as far as a cruising location and stuff that you know maybe was overlooked because of the popularity of the BVI. Um, I uh, I've had the opportunity to go down there and and um, and see some of that, uh, and I cruised out of there two years ago in March and and really tried to stick in the you know St. John and and uh and St. Thomas area and there is a tremendous amount to do and see you can have a great week right there without ever leaving the US Virgin Islands. Um so uh you put a list of some of your favorite places. I know that I think it was last year that you went and and did a US Virgin Islands sailing yeah. vacation. Yeah we did we went in December last year and um we had anticipated what a tough job Susan very tough job and I um, pay you to do this. <laughs> well, we were going to go to the Spanish Virgins, but the weather was too bad, and so we ended up staying in the in St. John and in St. Thomas the entire trip, and it was wonderful. I I found so many nice little places to go to, and and my highlight was swimming with the turtles at Salt Pond Bay. Wow. Uh, 
I, I just remember snorkeling and the fingers going up how many how many turtles just like going like this just all around me it was just and we were the only ones in the bay wow. it was beautiful but what's happened is the Vir u.s virgin islands has really had to pick up their game because of what's happened with the british virgin islands they really are they're starting to to see that we need to work on ourselves because we've got a lot to offer and 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 they do it's they're, they're they've put some cute restaurants that the lime out taco bar uh which is a little floating restaurant where you sit and sit in a, a donut hole and they shove out tacos to you and you eat them and then fish come up to eat the droppings it's 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 a lot of fun um to just going to these little quiet quiet mm -hmm. beaches where you can walk so that's a the u.s virgins is going to do very well I think the local government there's finally starting to realize that you know that there there's a lot of tourism revenue uh, to be had from the charter industry and not just selling shot glasses to tourists uh, off of uh, cruise ships. You know that you get people to come, spend money in good restaurants and and stay in hotels and chartering yachts uh, is really great for the local economy. And I'm just surprised it's taken them so long because the BVI is done so well with it for you know for a long time now but it's encouraging and i and i i know that they've been reaching out to some of the boat manufacturers and asking how they can um you know how they can attract more uh charters to the u.s virgin islands so it's going to be fun to watch that develop and certainly right now it's open for business and you know americans can go there they can charter and and have a nice vacation yeah it's wonderful and finally, um, tell us about some of these all-inclusive uh, uh, luxury crew charters that you've been working on. Well, there's there's lots of them out there, and and again, they, they suffered too with the British Virgin Islands being closed down. So many of the all-inclusive boats moved over to the U.S. Virgins and began. Uh, my dyslexia got the best of me here. Sorry. Indul indulge. Indulge. <laughs> indulge. Indulge. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I read it as indulged, so there you go. But it's a it's a stress-free vacation that you're going to see, um, where the boats can either start out of the British Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix, all of those locations that charterers want to go to, but they can't. Um, and they allow you know you have a captain and a chef on board where you see a little bit of the food right there. That's just a little little pretty picture that that's. That's, that's served. But what we're finding is, is that there's so many boats out there, whether it's for two people up to 30 people, you can do a flotilla um, with captains and chefs that work together and go to all of these destinations. You don't have to do a thing except for yeah. show up. <laughs> and Dave, Dave's seeing a, a growth in this, in this market, you know, for fully, fully crewed, you know, captain and cook. Um, in St. Pete, and and I think it's going to grow, um, yes. and I know it's going to grow because uh, I did it once, and I got to tell you, it's like the best vacation I've ever had. I'm, I've always been the guy, you know, putting the anchor down and operating the boat, making sure everybody's, you know, everybody's good, making sure everything's good with the boat, and you know, I love sailing, I love boating, been doing it my whole life, but. The first time I did a fully crew charter and got up in the morning and just went up into the cockpit, and there was my French press, and my coffee, and my freshly baked croissant. And I had a great breakfast, didn't have to do any work, didn't have to raise the anchor. I go down to my cabin, the bed's made. I was I was blown away. Um, it, it really was, was a cool experience. And uh, it's, uh, it's definitely on my list of things to do again. So um, uh, Susan has a, a number of big Fontaine Peugeot cats that we've sold that are fully crewed with captain and cook. And for anybody that's interested in, in that kind of vacation, reach out to her um, and she can steer you in the right direction and get you set up. So uh, Susan, thanks for that summary of, of the other Waypoints locations and what's happening is a lot of information uh out there i think that a lot of people have been wondering you know what's going on and i, I think that gives people a pretty good picture of of the state of things and as things evolve we'll we'll update and and uh, and, uh bring everybody up to speed 
So uh, just getting back to these, to the boats, which is what I love to talk about, uh, because uh, that's what I do. Um, the uh, the catamarans we mentioned, the new Isla 40 from Fontaine Peugeot. This is a brand new model. Um, again, we did a presentation on that boat a few weeks ago, but this is going to be a perfect boat for a sailing Florida uh, charter business or or a Caribbean, obviously Caribbean charter business. And the 42, uh, very similar, just a, a bit more room, a um, uh, bit more flexibility in the layout, a little bit larger cockpit, and and a little more space uh, on the uh, on the bridge deck and and forward. The Elba 45 has been a huge success. That is the gold standard of 45 foot cruising catamarans right now. It's what everybody wants. The demand uh, has pushed the production slots out there a ways, mm. but we have them. Uh, we have a number of production slots for uh, for 2022. Um, the advantage of getting a, a, of of getting your project going now is that while it's being built. You know, over the next two years, while you're waiting for it to be built, Dave or you know Susan or whoever you know at our other uh, at our other locations can build you a book of business. So when the boat's completed and ready, you don't show up and say, "Hey, here's my boat. How many charters do I have?" And you know, it's it, with a two-year lead time. You know, they've got a lot of time to market the boat and and give you a, a really good answer to that question. Um, so something to think about. On the uh, Power Cats, again, the MY44 and the MY40, um, I don't really know why they named these boats that because the 44, MY44 is actually 49 feet and the MY40 is actually 44 feet. So uh, my French friends, I don't know what they were thinking, but, but uh, um, I've been lobbying them hard to give a more accurate name. I think they're going to call this the MY44 four and the MY5, and then the next model that they're working on, the MY6. But anyway, I digress. The, the, these are awesome boats, a, a incredible platform. The beam on these boats, um, the accommodations, the, the owner's cabin, and then this massive uh, flybridge up here that is just the big party room. So, um, you know, whether you're in Florida or you're in Annapolis or the Caribbean, um, this is, you've got the million dollar view up here and you can operate the boat, do everything you need to do. And you've got 20, uh, 24, 25 knots of top end speed, 18 to 20 knots of cruising speed and amazing fuel economy. So these boats can go and go, go, they can do a thousand miles at, you know, at their efficient cruising speed, which is, you know, trawler speed. Um, and uh, it's, it's been a great success. And we have we have them available to sell. Dave needs them desperately in in uh, St. Pete. Um, Dave, what did your what did your you have an MY44 there now? What what kind of numbers is it doing? Just give us some flavor. It came into our fleet in January. It was in the uh, last year's December boat show here in St. Pete, starting January one through. October, it did almost $180,000 in revenue. 180 grand in revenue. That's pretty good. Out of St. Pete. So, um, and you, you and don't have a call for you. Every time he gets a statement, he goes, are you sure it's correct? <laughs> I go, yes, it is correct. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a good, that's a good thing to hear from an owner. Um, and you don't have an MY40 yet. I bet you'd like to have one of those. Correct. I just got another slip. Just waiting. I'm very yep. patient, but tomorrow's fine. Okay. Good. So anybody that wants to explore that, please uh, reach out to us. And then the do fours. We've got uh, the 430 here arriving end of next year uh, in St. Pete, but we have some other models available. We've got a three, uh, a 430 that is available right now. It's going to on its way to um, St. Pete for the boat show, then it's going to go live in Texas. But uh, as a as an inventory boat, we're we're keeping it to show it at these different locations. But it can be purchased and it can be placed into sailing Florida tomorrow. 
got a beautiful um, uh, blue paint job on the hull. We had it uh, painted or wrapped. Sorry, it's a wrap, which is a lot easier to maintain and, and about half the price of the paint job. Um, we had it wrapped for the Annapolis Boat Show, which of course was canceled. So we used it in our Annapolis private boat show that we had here in Annapolis. But otherwise, that's available. We've got uh, the beautiful Dufour 530 um, arriving uh, for inventory in the spring. We, we have one that uh, was sold to um, a past owner of ours that had bought a, a boat the year before, uh, the Genoa uh, 490. They moved up to the Dufour 530. She stepped foot on the boat and in 10 minutes she said, I love it. I, this is what I want. And uh, so they're going to keep their boat in Florida for the winter and then bring it back and charter it out of Annapolis this summer. So um, that'll be available to see. And then this brand new model, Dufour 470, which I think is the strikes the perfect balance between the 530 and the 430. It has all the bells and whistles of the 530, but in that manageable under 50 size range. So for charter fleets, I think this is going to be a huge success, this boat. And uh, we'll have one of these in the spring as well. Um, we talked about business yacht ownership a, a little bit. Um, uh, I, we, we have a, uh, a great relationship with an independent uh, certified financial planner and tax advisor by the name of Bill Lair. He doesn't work for Atlantic Cruising Yachts. We don't pay him any money, but he gets a lot of clients from us because a lot of our clients are interested and learning about tax advantages of business yacht ownership. Bill does a great job of explaining um, some of those opportunities on this weekly webinar that he hosts. Uh, you can go on to AtlanticCruising.com webinar sign up. You'll see it right there and it's free and you can hear it right from Bill. Again, he's not getting paid anything to do it. He, he gets a lot of new clients out of the, the you know, doing these things. So, that's his motivation. He works for the client as a fiduciary. So he has a, a legal responsibility to represent their interests first and foremost. Um, and it's, it's been a really great, uh, a really great arrangement. So I encourage anybody that would like to learn more about how to buy a boat and, and structure it as a business and get tax advantages to, to listen to Bill. Um, the next one I think is next Tuesday. Uh, but the schedule is here, so check that out. Um, learning more, Sailing Florida Charters, Dave's website, simple, sailingflorida.com. You can tell he's been doing this a long time because I think a lot of people would love to have that domain. Uh, waypoints.com is our Waypoints uh, website. There you can learn about all of our other uh, partners and uh, the chartering opportunities there. And Susan can help you uh, book vacations at these other great locations. And then for information on the boats, AtlanticCruising.com. And again, the webinar for business yacht ownership, AtlanticCruising.com webinar dash sign up. So that's where you can get pointed in the right direction for more information on everything that we've talked about. And now we've been a little over an hour, so I'm going to take some questions. Um, let's see. Oh, we got a bunch of them here. Okay, the first one here from John is provisioning your boat available within walking distance. That one's for you, Dave. We have several different options. We actually have a uh, complimentary trolley that runs through our downtown area, picks you up right at the marina. You can provision on your own. We have a grocery store, liquor store, drug store, and everything. We also use Instacart from Publix. You can go online, um, indicate everything that you'd like. They deliver it right to the boat before you get there and everything's put away for you. So we do both. Great. John's also asking if you get a boat through you, is the original price better than buying it on your own? Uh, that's an easy one. Yes, John, we are we're, as the largest dealers for Fontaine Peugeot and Dufour in North America. Nobody's got better pricing than we do. So we always guarantee the lowest possible price. Um, and we, we have great transparency and clarity on, on the price list. We show you the manufacturer's published price list. We give you detailed breakdowns of all the equipment that you're buying. 
we've got a number of uh, uh we did an episode on our commissioning process so that you can understand how we work with you to understand how you want to have the boat equipped uh depending on whether you're going to put the boat in a charter program in florida or you're going to take it off and go to fiji and live on the hook you know all of these things go into figuring out what stuff do you need to put on your boat after you buy it from the factory you know the, the factories are making a basic uh basic cruising model that's got you know enough bells and whistles to appeal to a global market but they don't want to get so specific with options that they're trying to meet the demands of of what people in japan want versus what people in california want versus what people in germany want um so they have to balance all that and let the dealer uh really recommend um you know the custom options so we have a ton of experience with that we've commissioned hundreds of boats and we know what works well in the caribbean in florida in annapolis um in the med and and um and we give you lots of detail and, and transparency on understanding what you what you're paying for when you buy that stuff. So I hope that's a, a answer to your question. Um, how do you take care of the boats during hurricane season? What do you do, Dave? You just kind of turn them loose out there, or what's what's the plan? Well, we have these guys that sit on the boat all night long, and they just sit there and they have a cocktail in their hand, and they see if any rain will actually hit it. Right. Perfect. every one of our boats versus um our hurricane plan which is submitted to the insurance company for every vessel has all the requirements there based on the wind speed we also have extra fenders we also have extra lines and diameters depending on what the wind speed is and the key to any hurricane coming in is getting the boats off the dock and away from the pilings so we wrapped all the boats together we take all the canvas down we double tie all the uh, uh sails so we make sure that those boats are ready and we've been very successful in that yeah and thank the lord that saint pete does not get hit with a lot of hurricanes as other areas in the world i can't believe you just said that come on <laughs> i'm trying <laughs> Did I tell yeah. you about the NY44, how well it does? <laughs> yeah. I used to say that about uh, Annapolis, and I'm sure our time's coming. But uh, now you have to take the proper pre you know, preparations. And uh, and that's what we have our staff for. Spring. Yeah. We actually had one guy on the docks all night long, walking, making sure retying lines. So uh, we have the staff ready, and they understand the process. Yeah. We have a we have a hurricane rodeo at least once a year, and we always get ready, and it's good practice, and it's a lot of work. But uh, when the real one comes, we'll be prepared. So, uh, another question uh, was: uh, Does the boat owner get to choose when they can use the boat themselves? Um, are there any restrictions? I think I can answer that one. That in general, with all of the waypoints locations, owner use is not limited. It is, you are uh, required to honor any charter bookings that have been made. Um, and normally you can provide, a, uh, you know, the dates that the boat is available for charter. Um, you can work that out with the base and then, you know, uh, uh, take your time, you know, uh, around that or call and book the boat if it's not booked already. So, uh, Dave, I hope I didn't take words out of your mouth, but I, I assume that's the way you do it. It's the way we do it. <laughs> Agree a hundred percent. Yep. What is the oldest boat you will take in your fleet? Uh, the answer to that is new. <laughs> we're, we're, we're interested primarily in taking new boats into the fleet um, for, for a variety of reasons. However, that being said, occasionally there's a need for a boat that we don't have a new boat to, to fill and we leave it at the discretion of, of our partners and in, in waypoints to decide you know if, if they will take a two or three year old something else that we can't supply them as new but the goal is and and the economics of this work a lot better with a new boat that's under warranty and, and that's that's something that you can learn more about on bill's uh webinar on on business shout ownership 
on average, how many weeks can an owner expect to get on on her boat uh, at um, at sailing Florida? That's a tough one. We usually, depending on the size, you know, and that always has a huge bearing on it. We go anywhere from twelve to fourteen weeks. Okay, and that and depends a lot of our on our business is based on day charters uh, and two to four day charters, which are more expensive than week long charters. So roughly that's how it works out. Yep. And you're doing, yeah, it's like here in Annapolis, we do a lot of three day charters. So we, we kind of look at it at total days and then we'll divide it by seven to give an estimate. But here in Annapolis, eight weeks is kind of the, uh, you know, seven, eight weeks is kind of the average. Uh, some boats do more, some do less. Of course, some owners use their boats a whole lot. Some don't use them as much. So there's a lot of variables that go into it. But but 12 to 14, Dave, if you, if you want to charter your boat, make it available, and you have the right boat. 12 to 14 weeks is is a is a reasonable goal. Yes. Cool. Um, I have someone asking if if the 50 50 split cha split changes if you use an outside broker. Um, I know with us it doesn't. It's fifty percent includes the broker fee. Uh, how does yours work, Dave? Yes, we're the same. Right. right. So no impact if the moorings or some other broker, charter broker, books the boat. Um, slip fees at the marina in St. Pete. Um, got an average number for that? Yeah, our slip fees are uh, fifteen dollars a foot. And then we have uh, $37.45 a month for unlimited water and electric. And all of our slips do have a pump out right behind them. Our guys do all the pump outs for you um, as a guest or as an owner, you never have to do any of that. Okay. Um, let's see. Dave, how do you qualify people who want to bear boat given the shallow waters on the west coast of Florida? If you go on our website under charter planning, we have a whole section on how we do everything. Everyone submits a resume to us with references and we can verify all those references. Also, we have laminated charts that we have on all the vessels that I have designed and I'm on my third revision of them. It gives them all the areas to go, all the anchorages to go. It has also on there every marina with their phone number, website, every restaurant. When someone does charter a boat with us, we do a full boat and chart briefing for the client. It can take anywhere from two to three hours. Once they do that briefing, they have the uh, briefing captain's business card. So every evening they check in with the briefing captain because the briefing captain knows what they discussed during the charter uh, briefing. So it gives them basically up-to-date information. If they ever have a question, they just call them and they answer everything for them. All right, and then uh, same person wanted to know what vessel gets more charters, motor cat or sailing cat? That's a tough one. It just, it just depends on the on the time of the year and the groups, um, both of them, both cats have been very successful for us uh, through the whole season at this point. Okay. Um, we have a question on a do for 40. What would be the typical monthly cost to the owner of the all in? Uh, we can get you that information. We can get you a sample business plan. We'll work with Dave and get the numbers um, to you. Um, that's from uh, Gerhard Klassen. If you if you just contact whatever ACY rep you've been working with, they'll be happy to get you a very detailed sample uh, cash flow with maintenance costs, stockage, revenue, um, charter rate, estimated weeks, all of that good stuff, and the maintenance costs. Awesome. Well, listen, um, I appreciate everybody's time today and, and joining us. It's been a lot of fun catching up with you, Dave, and I will see you uh, this weekend. Looking forward to that. And uh, Susan, thank you so much for giving us the update on, on what's happening uh, around the world of chartering elsewhere. Um, 
And uh, our next uh, episode of Cocktails and Conversations will be announced soon. I think we're, we're going to be doing a presentation on the new uh, Fontaine Peugeot 59. Hull number one just arrived in Fort Lauderdale. It's our customer and we're uh, outfitting the boat for him right now. He's graciously uh, agreed to allow, uh, allow us to, uh, to, to do a presentation uh, from his boat. So uh, I think I'm going to be down in the main salon. Ken Crasco is going to be up in the, uh, in the, on the bridge deck. And uh, we're going to talk about that boat a little bit. It's a beautiful, brand new design 59 uh, that's going into a crew charter arrangement. So stay tuned for that one. Um, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you then. And thanks a lot. And cheers. Got one sip of wine left. Cheers. Bye-bye.